Hi, welcome to my channel, Janelle the Enchantress. And today's pick a card is, why do people stare at you? So we have four pals, pal one, pal two, pal three, pal four. I'll give you a moment to decide and we'll go ahead and get started. You know, it's trash day. And of course they decided to come when I started the reading. Like, no, they wouldn't go, they wouldn't be running on time. I'm coming exactly when you press record. The fuck? Anyway, so <laughs> the card that you chose, Power One, is protest, start a revolution, and health and fitness. Right off the bat, it is your lower back. Some of you all have a curve in your backside that people stare at or that catches people's eye. Also, there's something about seeing you as someone who they may not have been open to in general or they may have a certain type of stereotype against but your aura attracts them there's something about them that still wants that still makes them engage with you and it doesn't always have to be that there's a stereotype that makes them judge you or look at you in a particular way negative in a particular negative way it's just that they may not be familiar with who you are for some of them it is like a negative connotation but they may they may be standoffish because they they're not familiar with who you are and how you represent yourself or your general demographic but when they see you, your aura makes them want to get to know you more or speak with you or they they it's like um they are they're attracted to you and not necessarily. from a standpoint of physical or sexual attraction, but just your light. <laughs> also, a lot of you all are in shape. So people stare at your body because of that. Work, achievement, success. Yeah, they feel like you've put a lot of work into your health. For some of you all, it's your hair. Oh, especially if you color your hair. Other women are like, I have, and I didn't mean to say women, but I guess it's mainly women who notice this. Other women are like, I love that hair color. Or I've never seen a woman's hair this healthy who has it colored or i've never seen a woman style her hair in this particular way hard work ahead <laughs> you will receive a gift A goal-oriented person. Also, people stare at you because they see you as somebody who
takes a stance on things. So you may have tattoos or you may have um, t-shirts or you may wear pins or some type of way there's a physical representation of your beliefs. So you could wear a cross or you could wear um, head wraps. You could wear a LGBTQ flag or bracelet. There's something about you that represents how you identify and what you believe in and that catches people's attention as well. Oh, that didn't come out. So it said, new home, new attitude. Then was a relationship with a woman with dark complexion or dark hair. Yeah, and also, I don't know if you walk fast. I'm seeing somebody who walks really fast. <laughs> you always look like you have some place to go or you have something to do. Yeah, you come off as a busybody to people. Like you're always working towards something or working on something. And a lot of people stare at you because they're like, okay, imagine if somebody was holding this broom and look how this car is facing this car. It's like people watch what you do for work. And even if you're not working, they just watch you as you live your day-to-day -day life. Like, you may be the type of person who sees trash on the ground and picks it up. You may be the type of person who cleans up beaches. You could be the type of person that when you're just passing by people in your community or neighborhood, you tell them about events that are going on or um, the next council meeting. And you may not even work for these organizations or work with them, but it's just something that intrigues you and you feel like you you should spread the word. But, you know, that's like guerrilla marketing. So somebody could be paid for that. So it would still seem like you're working, if that makes sense. Let's get one more from this deck. You should accept valid criticism. Yeah, you're somebody who I, I'm really getting a um, an activist. Or a public speaker. But you don't stand for the way society has been conditioned or programmed to look at the next person as an enemy or you don't accept people discriminating against other people. Or judging others for being different from them, from them. You're the type of person who will speak up. And if you don't, or you will show how you feel about it. And if it's not verbally, it's through some type of physical representation. So let's get into your tarot. Trying to do it so you can still see it. Okay. Oh, oh well. Wow, 
Why do people stare at pal one? Why do people stare at pal one? Why do people stare at pal one? Holy Spirit, why do people stare at pal one? There's too many. This one? Okay. Nine of Swords. Yeah, you make people feel guilty about <laughs> their beliefs. You make people second guess things that they've just, that they've been taught or that they just see as normal. I'm hearing you make some people question themselves, so that's why they stare at you. Like, for instance, if they once thought people with tattoos or they once thought people of a certain race or um, who carry themselves in a certain way were, and I'm seeing 1111 on the clock as I say this, were um, all criminals or they do nothing but cause problems or I just heard low lives. When people see you, they realize that you're nothing like the stigma that was placed on you because of the group that you are a part of. You're actually somebody who's very healthy, who appears to be very hardworking, somebody who appears to be very stable. So then they start rethinking like things that they've said or done in the past, the way they've acted, how they judge people. And it really like provokes them to reevaluate themselves. Yeah. Like turn over a new leaf. Like people stare at you because you provoke a lot of like reevaluating that prompts them to grow like i'm getting you're the type of person who triggers self development in people Also, you trigger lifestyle changes for those of you who work out or just eat healthy. People see you and they want to take better care of themselves. They evaluate not only how they treat other people, but how they treat themselves. Like people stare at you because you prompt them to be a better human being. Yeah, with the six of wands. And this hard working keeps coming out. So this could be, I already described it, but yeah, people stare at you because they see you as somebody who's, all, yes, you're always working to change. You're always working to evolve, not only yourself, but humanity as a whole. And where people think that you should be ashamed of your race or you should be ashamed of what you've experienced or you should be ashamed of your class, you carry yourself with pride. And so again, that magnetizes people towards you. And because as they stare at you, they start to see why you would carry yourself with such dignity and pride. Because they start, because the more they stare at you, the more they look at you, the more they see you as a human being and not just whatever label. Or, or identifier or stigma or stereotype that has been placed on you by society. 
So I'm going to leave it there, pal one. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for checking in. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, goodbye. Hi, pal two. This is your reading on why do people stare at you? So you chose gray. Endings are inevitable. And this kind of love is getting expensive. Mm, that's from a song by Gwen Stefani. <sighs> People stare at you because you look like you're always waiting or looking for something better. Like, wherever you are, whoever you're around doesn't pique your interest. And so, you know that there's more out there for you. Also, people stare at you because you could have nice shoes or you could wear nice shoes. Also, people stare at you um, if you wear heels. And I just saw 111 on the clock. So yeah, people stare at you if you wear heels because they, they wonder how you're able to walk in them or how they're so high. Somebody in this pile wears kitten heels and they also find that adorable because they don't see many people who wear kitten heels in today's age. I don't know. I just picked up a conversation where somebody was like, normally that would make them look like somebody's grandma, but it actually looks nice on them. But yeah, people stare at you because there tends to be a, an imaginary and invisible wall around you. It seems that way, at least, where people feel like you're disconnected because you're waiting for a different opportunity. You're waiting for your ships to come in. You're waiting for more. Yeah, and that they have to give more or offer more in order to receive some type of attention or affection from you. Like, whatever you're around is just not enough. Why do people stare at Pal 2? You're on the road to success. Yeah, because you always look like... You're waiting for your harvest to come in. Very much so giving me the energy of, I'm just passing through. Don't get too comfortable. I'm just passing through. You could be a Virgo or, or Gemini or have those placements in your chart. Why do people stare at Pile 2? People are like, where, where are you going? Or what do you expect? And how do you expect to get there? Like, these are the things that people are wondering while they're staring at you. Like, who told you there was more out there? <laughs> Who told you there was more out there? And how do, how do you expect to make that happen? And people stare at you as well because they feel like in order to be friends or in order to have a friendlier relationship with you. They have to have an opportunity for you. Like if they don't, if they don't have anything of importance to say to you, if they don't have an if they don't have an ev an event that piques their interest to invite you to, or they don't have something to give you, or 
just information to make you aware of. You could care less. They see you as somebody with tunnel vision. So they stare at you because they see that you have tunnel vision. And they stare at you because you seem checked out. Like mentally, you're not there. You're wherever you want to be. You're wherever you're planning on going. If you're at position B, your mind is focused on position E. You don't really care about what other people got going on that's at position B with you. It just seems like that's a waste of time for you from the people from the people's perspective that stare at you. And then misunderstanding wanted to fall out. So what I'm getting from that is is that could possibly be a misunderstanding? You are focused on your goals, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you wouldn't be open to connecting with people. It's just that that's how people perceive you, so they don't bother you. It's like... They're the ones who are imagining this wall around you. And therefore, they are the ones who are shutting themselves out. Why do people stay at power two? Two of Swords. I was, oh my gosh, I should have said it. I was just about to say there's something about being dizzy. And then Two of Swords came out. I don't know why. Why is this Two of Swords? There's something about people being discombobulated when they look at you. Why is that, Spirit? It's like your true essence or who you really are is one way, but people see you in this entirely different way. Why are people confused and dizzy when they stare at Powell too? Oh, yeah, they feel like their presence is a burden to you, but you're actually like really loving. You're actually like really open to company or meeting and interacting with people. I don't know. They kind of, yeah, because it's a lot of energy of gray. She has gray hair. She has a head full of gray hair. And then it says gray hair. I don't know. It's this energy of people feeling like you see them as dull and lifeless. Or wherever you are is dull and lifeless. But they're projecting that energy onto you because you have goals, because you have enthusiasm, because you, you know, have places that you want to go, people you want to see or people you want to meet, things you want to see and do. They see you as this colorful, vibrant person. And... Because they don't have this insight or that's not the way they see life, they feel like they're dull, but they project that energy onto you and make you feel, or they project that energy onto you and think that you see them as dull. 
and I and a lot of you all may feel like you wonder why people don't approach you as much or why people don't offer to hang out or come around you or kind of just leave you be and this is why That's why I picked up all the, on all of those questions that people are asking themselves when they're staring at you. like, Because they don't have that same type of mentality. They don't have that same vision for life. So they're like, where are you going? Who told you about this? Why do you think that it's real? Or why do you think you can do it? What's supposed to happen when you get there? What does it look like? <laughs> you know? That's interesting. Why do people stare at Pile 2? Why do people stare at Pile 2? Why do people stare at Pile 2? The world. I just heard on to the next, on, on to the next, on to the next, on, on to the next. Yeah. It's just, I just heard it's just a matter of time before Pal 2 is on to the next. Why do people stay at Pal 2? Seven of Pentacles. They feel like it's going to take them time. So when people stare at you, they, they're thinking, it's going to take me time. Me some time to. Understand how to. relate to pal to it's going to take some time for me to like gain the strength and courage in order to i just heard compete so i don't know why compete came out that's for the low vibrational people. But the high vibrational people are just like, it's going to take me some time. No. Oh, it's both, Spirit says. So it's going to take some time for them to compete with the ideals that you have in your head. That's what it is. So when people stare at you, they think about how they can live up to your standards. Or what they perceive as your standards. And they just, for some reason, you just come off as interesting to them. Like fascinating. I just heard I got to be a cool kid. Yeah, you make some people feel older than they are. Like you make some people feel. Like they're not up on trend or they're not hip. And then when they look at you, they see you as somebody who's just really cool. Like the stuff that you, the stuff that you wear, the stuff that you know about, the stuff that you're doing, the way you present yourself is just very forward thinking. Some of you all, they see you as being chic. Other than you, whatever, whatever your style is, they just feel like, oh, that's, that's really cool. And I'm just, the, I keep hearing that's for the young folks. But I'm picking up, this is funny. Sometimes this is coming from people around your age. <laughs> so you make them feel older than they are because they feel like they're boring and dull and lifeless. And then for the other ones 
who are older than you, you remind them of their age and how they've lost their zest for life. And so they just stare at you thinking about all of that. And so I'm going to leave it there, pal, too. I thank you for stopping by. Thank you for checking in. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, goodbye. Hi, pal three. This is your reading on why do people stare at you? So you chose castle. It's time for healing and not war. And acquaintance, friends. Mm. As soon as I was about to start your reading, pal three, I got a, a headache or I felt a headache coming on. So I don't know if people get a headache while looking at you or or while staring at you or they stare at you because they have a headache. I don't know. Something that's weird. And I'm looking at your oracle card and all of this smoke and this fog. Which will cause you to have a headache and have like lightheadedness. Why do people stare at pile three? Three 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 is the angel number for this power. Why do people stay at power three? Why do people stay at power three? Stepping legs stepping into a new experience. Why do people stay at power three? You will, I got this before. I love well, spirit said take it. You will receive a gift. Why do people stare at pile three? News of a birth or a new business opportunity. Why do people stare at pile three? Why do people, it's a lot. One at a time, please. Why do people stare at pile three? Something about your, like, um, strength. But it, this is inner strength. Something about you being able, yeah, with that headache, you being able to handle pressure. Acquaintance friends and two-faced friends. And now I feel weak. Forces working against you. Yeah. Why do people stare at you? Someone is extremely stubborn and unwilling to change. People stare at you because they, they feel as if you've been burdened. Oh, and I just saw 333 three, three on the clock as I said that. Didn't I say earlier your your number was 333? Three, three, three? Anyways, people feel like you've been really burdened. They can tell that it's taken a lot of inner strength for you to overcome whatever you've experienced in the past. And I hope that y'all can hear me, but it's like... I don't know. I have to take a sit. I have to sit back in your pal because I'm overwhelmed. Like I feel weak. <laughs> My head started hurting. You've been through a lot. And so people stare at you because they can tell.
they can tell, even if they don't know the details, that you've had to endure situations where people or circumstances try to hold you back. But because you have so much willpower, willpower, inner strength, and you kept going, they can see why you're able to, yeah, create a new beginning or why you're still standing to this day. Because I've never noticed this, but look at this person's hand pulling on the rope on the mule. And then look at this cat that's facing the head. So both of this cat and this mule is facing east, like towards a new horizon. And in both scenarios, there are people behind them trying to hold them back or distract them or deter them from where they're going. And so the people who stare at you may be some of your acquaintances. Or people who've known about these experiences you've had, but they don't know the details. Or they're not in your inner circle enough to get to know your personal story or more details about the situation. But they can... piece the story together based off of things that they've heard and the energy that you carry when you walk through a room. And so they can just sense the burden. They can sense this overwhelming energy. And it kind of makes them weak because they think about how they would feel if they had to endure half of what you've experienced. And so, yeah, it, that's what it is. It gives them a headache thinking about it. Like I couldn't imagine. Some of them have weak stomachs. Like they can't handle thinking about the things that you've experienced or the things that you've had to overcome. I'm here in powerhouse. People stare at you because they see you as a powerhouse. And you continue to create new experiences for yourself. You continue to create new opportunities for yourself. You continue to keep pushing ahead. And people stare at you and wonder, like, how were you able to do that? Is there somebody, yeah, with this two of cups, is there somebody helping you out? Did somebody help you out? Who was it? Because it seems like everything around you fell apart. Or there was nobody on your side or backing you up. And some type of way you're still standing. Why do people stare at power three? Why do people stare at pile three? Why do people stare at pile three? Why do people stare two of swords? <clears throat> we just got that in the last reading. But I'm going to keep it. Because I feel called to. Yeah. People are confused about how you're still going. <laughs> They're confused about your journey. That's what it is. People look at you and they ponder about your journey. The ins and outs. 
they like I'm picking up these people want to know details Cause you're pretty low key. So what I'm getting is people who are complete strangers, they don't really stare at you because you cloak your energy. You keep a low profile because of everything you've been through. But again, acquaintances or people who kind of know you or know about you, they're the ones that are staring at you. A lot of people stare at power three. The hang hanging with perception. Give me a moment. For some reason, I'm called to look in the book. If I can get to it. Okay. Perception. The hanging way. Okay, perhaps you must let go or make a sacrifice to achieve a greater good. You may join a group of people who have made similar sacrifices. You need to give up the old to make way for the new. You may relinquish a selfish desire out of love and commitment to another person. You may get out of a relationship because you realize it is detrimental. Time spent in contemplation, rest, relaxation, and reflection is well worth it. You need to re reconnect with the spiritual dimension of life. Perhaps you've been worrying excessively and need to contact the higher power. Other people are unlikely to understand where you're coming from. Exactly. I got a, That's the reason why I got a headache when I came into your pal, because people don't understand you. They don't understand your journey. They don't understand the choices you've made. They don't understand why the things that have happened to you have happened to you. And they don't understand how you were still able to make it after those things happened. So all of these things are running through people's mind when they stare at you. Because, and then even in this card, if you look at her eyes, it looks like she's been crying. But she still has those lashes on. She still has her blush on. She's still swinging along. And then also, there's something about you that... It's very spiritual, of course, if you're watching this video, you're more than likely spiritual, duh. But what I'm picking up in, picking up on is this is foreign to the people who are staring at you. And then if you look at this Oracle card, she's wearing crystals. So people stare at you because they want to know what you know. Because there's something in them that tells them that what you experienced had to be for a reason because it was just so abnormal. And then the way you came out of the situation is so abnormal that there has to be a, a greater cause. There has to be some type of lesson in all of this, but they can't wrap their head around it on their own. So people stare at you because they want to know more. They want to get your your perspective on your life story, essentially, or the situations that you've been through. But they don't know how to approach you. Because, again, a lot of them are acquaintances or a lot of them aren't that close to you. And then they feel uncomfortable for knowing that they've heard about the situations that you've been in. Like It's almost like they feel like them asking you about 
what you've been through is them admitting that they have been listening and or participating in gossip. I'm hearing trials and tribulations. People want a testimony about your trials and tribulations. That's what they're thinking when they're staring at you. Why do people stare at pile three? And look at what came out the high priestess. So this could be my pal of tarot readers or practitioners or spiritual gurus, but you're just, you're mysterious to them. Your life is odd. Your journey is odd. But you come across as very deep. I'm hearing still waters run deep. Because they don't see you as somebody who is always out and about or always socializing with different people. Especially if you used to be around these acquaintances or hang around them and now that now you don't. They want to know what higher knowledge or what secrets about life you know that they don't understand and how that connects to your journey, your path and what they've heard about you. So I'm going to leave it there, pal three. I thank you for stopping by. Thank you for checking in. Please make sure to like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, goodbye. Hi, pal four. This is your reading on why do people stare at you? So you chose evil queen. You deserve sugar, not salt. And King Sierras. Before um, I hit film to record your reading power for it. I heard good googly moogly. That thing is juicy. I don't even know. I, don't, I can't even remember who sang the song or where it's from. But I just kept hearing that. And excuse me if I'm a little bit low in energy. Pal 3 was a lot. Um, and so I'm still trying to get back recalibrated. Oh, but back to the channel song that I was singing. So you all can have a baby face or you could have like, I don't know, something about baby fat. Like you have a rounder face and I'm seeing like juicy cheeks. Like you have an adorable face, particularly when you smile. It's so cute. Some of you all could carry like a little bit of extra weight. But you don't look heavy. You just look juicy or like round. I don't know. It's it's cute though. It gives you this youthful appeal, this youthful presence, even if you are older. Because I'm looking at the lines on her hands. So it's giving me the hands of an older woman. But quinceañeras are for coming of age are a coming of age celebration. Yeah, so it's it's funny because you appear younger than you are. But there are still signs that you have matured in other ways or that you have approached or you have reached, excuse me, you have reached manhood or womanhood. And I'm here and I can teach you a thing or two about life. So people stare at you and they wonder what you can teach them about life. I'm getting more so the practical day-to-day -day things and how you're able to... Maintain this presence and this appearance while being at whatever stage of life you're in. 
Because even if you are in your early 20s, because if you're under 18, you shouldn't be here. Goodbye. I don't mean to be rude, but no. Anyways, so if you're in your 20s, you still look like a teenager. I'm actually seeing somebody who goes back to their old high school and depending on or whatever school that they used to attend and everybody like still remembers them or people's people know about them because like they were a legend or people knew about them when their older brothers or older, older cousins or siblings or a neighborhood friends and their family went to the school you know it's like that type of thing like people people stare at you because it's like even the younger people like resonate with you they look up to you as well I guess I, I, I guess I'll put your tarot cards first. I didn't do it in that order for the other piles, but y'all are special. One at a time, Spirit. King of Swords. Yeah, there's the sun. Especially if you're a masculine. Why do people stare at power for? Especially if you are a masculine. I don't know. Y'all have a storyline coming in. Clarify this King of Swords. And I'm getting distracted. Like, it's every time I want to say something, I'm being drawn to do something else. And even how I pulled your tarot cards first, and I felt like, okay, I need to go ahead and pull the tarot cards, although I was pulling oracle cards first before a switcheroo there's like a distraction where things are being switched you didn't when oh people stare at you because you distract them because it's like you you switch things up a contradict a contradiction people see you as a walking contradiction Yeah, sugar, salt. Older hands, a, a, a older woman's hand, a car representing a coming of age for a 15 year old. You know, it's like people stare at you because they, they, they feel like you're a, a walking contradiction. We'll dive deeper into that, but first let me clarify these. Because I didn't feel the need to clarify the others, but for you, I do. Clarify this King of Swords. Which one? The devil, okay. Clarify the sun for your cups. Clarify nine of wands. Three of swords. The knight of wands at the bottom. Knight of swords. The Hermit, the Chariot. And for me to be bringing up people showing love to you from like your old school or old town or old neighborhood. And then I say like people look up to you, the younger people look up to you. Yeah. People stare at you because you you give them hope that they can achieve their dreams. People stare at you because they see you as a role model.
they feel like they can get insight on how to improve their circumstances or again like make whatever dreams that they have come true like you're you're a source of inspiration for other people particularly when it comes to like the ultimate life fulfillment you know having the partner of your dreams you know having a successful career being financially stable, having healthy and happy children, or, you know, con being connected with your family, whether or not it's a family you created or just your loved ones. I don't know, having like that dream dog that everybody wants or dream pet. And I'm here, I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man, or however that song goes. Yeah, people see you as the man or the woman. And I'm picking up that people didn't always see you this way. At one point, you were judged harshly. You could have been an impulsive person with this Knight of Wands. Someone that people thought made reckless decisions or you didn't plan things out. I'm here with reckless abandonment, like you just went after things. You also had a no BS demeanor. People just didn't know how to take you. They saw you as just being wild and out of control or directionless. And then there was a time when like you kind of fell off the scene or people didn't know much about what you had going on. And so during this time, you were like restructuring your life or overcoming some problems or issues that you had. It's different for all of you all. Some of you all went on a healing journey. Others of you stabilize your finances others of you were able to regulate your emotions self-reflect on your past actions i don't know but you were just very self-disciplined and so you restructured your life you you change your life around Don't call it a comeback. I've been here before. And it's like, you always had a presence about you. That's why people were so invested on, invested in whether or not you were going to succeed and giving their unsolicited advice or passing along judgment on you. People don't pay attention to anybody that they truly consider it. I don't know what I just said, but people don't pay attention to people that they don't truly consider valuable or worthy or significant. So your energy is screaming like, what do you mean? This isn't a comeback. I've been popping. I knew, always knew I was going to be successful. I just didn't know how I was going to get there. So when y'all saw me being quote unquote reckless or just going about things chaotically I was or and or not taking certain opportunities that you all thought I should I was just building up my self-esteem I was just building my courage I was just ironing out the 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 details Gaining an understanding of the fine print so I could figure out how to achieve my success. You were strategizing. And so people stare at you because they think about like. How 
how you were able to overcome. Some of you all could have been in toxic relationships, like you could have had addictions. You could have, again, this compulsive, reckless energy is very present. And they're wondering how you were able to shift your mindset, how you were able to gain so much self-discipline, how you were able to strategize. How you were able to control your emotions so that you didn't let not only outside influence and outside opinions, but also what you were going through yourself deter you from believing in yourself, deter you from moving ahead? Like, how did you maintain your optimism? How did you maintain this steadfastness of, how did you just know that if you just, followed your path, you would get to where you needed to go. How did you persevere? How did you rebound after the mistakes that you made? And for some of you all, when I, uh, some of you all, when I picked up, like, you all coming back around, like, older I mean, people you, people from your old town or people from your old neighborhood or old school or, you know, family members or friends. It's just like, how are you able to kind of like, um, yeah, journey? Yeah, spiritual love. How are you able to still show them love? How are you able to still be happy in the face of everything that you went through? Like, you, you're not someone who walks around with a chip on their shoulder. You're somebody that's just like, yeah, I'm the man. I'm the woman. Yeah, I did that. Heavy Leo energy. So if you're not Leo sun, you can have Leo placements, or that's just the energy of this reading. It's like somebody that's shining, that's in the spotlight. People are like, ooh, I want to shine like power four. <laughs> Disappointment in some affair, yeah. And people want to know more about like... What did you have to cut off or what did you have to change or what did you have to restructure? What did you have to release? in order to get rid of disappointing situations that you were experiencing? Like, what was it that you needed to cut off in order to distance yourself from conflict and setbacks and sorrow and your life just being in an upheaval? That's what people think when they stare at you. And they think about how, like, how many people are probably trying to get at you or trying to be in your circle or trying to be in your energy that don't mean you any good. Like, how many, like, I'm hearing clout chasers are around you or trying to be around you. And I just heard, I'm flying high, but you like fly above it. So when they stare at you, they're wondering like, do you recognize that this person is only trying to date you, only trying to befriend you, only trying to be around you or do business with you or partner up because they want to ride off of your shine? But then the more they watch you or stare at you, they're like, yeah. Because there's no way that they've made it to where they are after where they've been. And they can't see people like this a mile away. But others of you, they people still wonder. 
when they're staring at you. And these, and these are some of the people who are staring at you. Whoa, I just picked up on that. <laughs> people who want to take advantage of your success. People who are like only sexually attracted to you. People want to ride your coattail. People want to clout chase. These are some of the people who stare at you. And that's why. Karma. You will reap what you have sown. Yeah, people realize that you went hard. You went after what you wanted. And you didn't stop until you got it. And now you're reaping the rewards. I'm hearing, wow. Wow, pal four. You're a star. Announcement. Yes. <laughs> people stare at you because. I just heard you a walking lick. Okay, that's the negative energy coming in. So be mindful, power four. There are some people who are staring at you and they're thinking you're a walking lick. Some of you all, because I was picking up on Leo energy, some of you all are flashy. And I'm looking at the long nails and the quinceaneras, which is like a, a coming out party or what a uh, coming of age party. And it's like this major announcement about this stage you're in. So yeah, when people when people stare at you, they see you as somebody who is basically making their presence known or showing up as the person who achieved their dream lifestyle. Or the person who's going to make it happen or has made it happen. And so with that, Pal 4, I'll leave it there. I love y'all, Pal 4. My last pal, especially when I do four pals, Y'all always, like, bring it on home for me. Y'all always have the best energy. I mean, I like everybody's energy, but it's like, if I have a particularly hard pal with the other previous ones, y'all just bring it back home for me. So, shout out to you, pal four. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, goodbye.